The story you want to see will begin in a few seconds, but I'd like to remind you that we're part of public broadcasting. We don't sell commercials, we don't have sponsors. We rely on people like you for support, people who care about educational opportunity. And right now, I'd like to give you an opportunity to help us. You can make a tax-deductible contribution by visiting our website, learningmatters.tv backslash donate. Thanks for your support, and here's that video. When school superintendent Paul Vallis arrived in New Orleans three years ago, he faced a tough challenge. How to educate students who are way behind academically or who have gotten in trouble with the law. This school, Booker T. Washington, was designed for teenagers who were performing at an elementary school level. Although three-fourths of students in Vallis's district are at least one grade level behind, here the problem is extreme. I've got 16-year-old 7th graders and 17-year-old 8th graders and 18-year-old 9th graders who are reading at the 3rd or 4th grade reading level. Those are, those are uh, tremendous challenges. Students who have been expelled or run into trouble with the law attend Success at Schwartz Academy with the goal of improving their behavior and returning to regular high school. We have students who have violated the, the zero tolerance policy, who, who pose a physical danger to other students, kids who are too violent and too disruptive to be kept in the, in the traditional school environment. You are taking a quiz. Bring me your quiz. No, bring From day one, discipline at both schools became the main concern. Mara Bercy was assistant principal at Booker T. Washington. Our students, they are frustrated. They are emotionally frustrated. They are academically frustrated. Oh, no! They're not aware of how they're creating a domino effect or how it may affect the entire classroom. Halfway through his first year, Vallis turned to an approach he'd used before as superintendent in Philadelphia. He hired a private company, Camelot, to run Booker T. Washington and Schwartz. One of the reasons that we brought Camelot in was there was no infrastructure. When we came in, there were no alternative schools. We were not equipped yet to come in with a model of our own and to set up these programs and to run them effectively. Camelot established a rigid code of behavior. Where are you supposed to be? Students had to walk through the halls with their hands behind their backs. Those who acted out were removed from class and placed in in-school suspension. For right now, you don't even need to copy this last sentence. According to math teacher Luke Stratner and others, the approach backfired. There was big fights going on every day. And so there was so much chaos that the Camelot guys, you know, we were all trying to control the chaos, but it wasn't really working. Just over a year later, Vallis chose not to renew Camelot's contract at either school. Did you fire Camelot? No, no, no. We contracted them only for a single year. I mean, the game plan was to bring them in to get programs set up so that we wouldn't have these kids on the street. And then, to, and then to bring the programs in-house. So that was always part of the plan. Bringing in Camelot was a mistake or not? No, it wasn't a mistake at all. Given the fact that nothing existed, I believe that they did an adequate job. In fact, maybe even a, 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 you know, a more than adequate job. This year, Paul Vallis took back control of his alternative schools, and he's moved fast. Well, did you get in, you've been in trouble? Introducing a host of strategies designed to reach beyond the classroom and address the deeper roots of student problems. Who here believes, if you, if you believe you would shoot somebody, if you got in a fight with them, let me see your hand, raise your hand. I got jumped, it was the first time I ever got jumped. And I was just, I was, I was really, I was, excuse my loud, pissed off. Right. This is Circle of Courage, a new course at Booker T. Washington, the school for overage students. It's a daily class designed to teach them to make better life decisions a lesson leader Khalil Osiris and other instructors have learned the hard way. Each of us have had challenges with the criminal justice system. We've made some very um, poor choices and in some cases uh, horrible choices in our lives, uh, but have found a way to turn our lives around. You have the potential to do it all, but it comes down to what kind of choices you're going to make. You feel me? All right. They been there, they done that, and they understand and then they give us a positive note so we don't take the same route that they took. I, I love that. Deputy Self Superintendent Michael Hagan oversees Vallis's alternative schools. They're learning how to de-escalate on their own. They're learning how to do peer mediation. They're learning that there are opportunities where you are, are going to be on the outside world, 
where you're going to have to make a choice. Do you want to do something that's a poor decision or do you want to make the best decision? Principal Rosemary Martin hopes that lessons learned in Circle of Courage will lead to academic success. A lot of them put up walls and we've had to chisel away at those walls so that we can get into their minds so that they have a mindset of wanting to be taught, wanting to achieve, wanting to learn, even though they may be three and four grades below or behind their age level. To earn the students' trust, Principal Martin says the school has to take responsibility for past mistakes. Many students are victims of a system that promoted them year after year in spite of their poor performance. Suppose the kids said, hey, how come they didn't teach me to read? What do you say? I tell the students who have that, those issues that, yeah, there are people who did not teach you how to read. Somewhere along the road, someone dropped the ball. So it's not their fault? It's not their fault. That's the first step is acknowledgement. Last year, just 13% of eighth graders passed the state test required to move on to high school. This year, with the help of after-school programs and Saturday classes, Principal Martin hopes she'll reach 60%. It's an all-out effort to have our kids achieve the mastery of, that they need to achieve. At Schwartz Academy, the high school for students who've been expelled, discipline is still tight, but classes have changed. Talk to me. In this journalism class, students are encouraged to develop and present a point of view. This is a reflection of you. What Schwartz you now has a monthly newspaper, a first for the school. You guys write well, and people tend to follow what you all say. Today's discussion concerns coverage of the earthquake in Haiti. We should do a compare and a contrast about the time that it took for them to give the people food and to save them and stuff like that to the time that it took for them to get to New Orleans and save us. I think for the first time, they're recognizing that they have a voice. Yeah. Somebody is asking them, what do they believe, and they get to say it. OK, all right. In an effort to develop skills that can lead to jobs, some Schwartz students are now participating in a dual enrollment program at Louisiana Technical College. One, two, three. Courses include nursing yes. and carpentry. I like taking young people out of the traditional high school environment and putting them in an environment uh, where they are surrounded with individuals who, have, uh, who are focused on their careers. That's what we're going to do, young men, all right? Although both schools still struggle with behavior problems, Vallis believes his empowerment approach is making a difference. It's like tough love, where with Camelot it was tough. Tough love versus tough. Versus tough. State test results come back in May. Vallis will be watching for those scores and other indicators as well. We'll measure success by whether or not their behavior improves, by whether or not they become focused, by whether or not they begin to act responsibly, we'll be able to tell whether or not they're having a positive impact. Already, some students are voting with their feet. At Schwartz, students are meant to transfer back to traditional high schools. Some are choosing to stay.